Michael Swickert here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Thank you for joining us. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, which you know, that's the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Know this, on Mondays and Fridays, we do historical and cultural aspects of New Mexico, and every Wednesday I do a tribute to someone or several people important to New Mexico. First, let's do a Western quotation. Reba McIntyre, the singer and actress, said it, and I liked it. She said, I grew up in southeastern Oklahoma on a working cattle ranch, and it was always very romantic to me. The West, the cowboy, the Western way of life. Amen, Reba. I love your singing and acting and your reverence for the Western way of life, which I share. Farming and ranching is central to my growing up, even though I was born at Holloman Air Force Base, a couple blocks from the flight line, and lived on many military bases growing up. My summers, though, were often spent in the Carrizozo area around ranching and the Roswell area around farming. As an adult, I lived in Carrizozo and Capitan around the ranching community, though at the time I owned the Lincoln County News, a West, it's a weekly newspaper, not Western, weekly, around the desert southwest. It brings those Western feelings to the surface with me when I see a windmill, especially if I see the sucker rod going up and down and the discharge pipes spewing that great, cool water. The quote, West was won, unquote, by the use of windmills and also barbed wire, though, as I usually do in these discussions, I credit the railroads because with them, the cattle went to market quickly and without walking off some of their pounds. Here in our little slice of paradise, water throughout the history was only a hundred feet or so away, but it was covered with a hundred feet of dirt, which if you've spent any time on the power end of a shovel, you know, makes it hard to get to the water. More so, even if you went down a hundred feet with a shovel, you still had to get the water to the surface where you needed it. Enter the windmill in the 19th century with the inventions of Daniel Holliday and Stuart Perry. Windmills have been around thousands of years, usually used to grind things like corn, but here the windmill pump was applied to the need for water by ranchers. It converted the wind blowing, which if you've lived here very long, you know it pretty does it all the time, and it converted that to lifting the water to the surface. The barbed wire allowed ranchers to not have to chase over a wide area to recover their own grazing cattle. For many years, the grazing cows intermingled with other people's cows, and they had to be separated at a roundup before going to market. Barbed wire enabled skipping a roundup. Now, you need a lawyer occasionally, you need an accountant occasionally, but you need the production of the ranchers and farmers to feed people three times a day. And me, I need Hatch Valley chili every day. Yes, I do. This being the first full week of July, it's a great time in New Mexico to go boating and fishing. There's a connection between boating and fishing. If you're fishing and not catching anything, happens to me, then I say, oh, I was just out boating. The one time I was riding in my brother's Bayliner boat, and I was just ca casting the fishing pole without any bait on the hook to hear it go zing, 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 zing. I didn't want to catch any fish, but I liked the sound and the act of casting it out there. After I'd cast it out there, I'd reel it in and make a cast again. This was relaxing. Then it happened. I caught something, and I said to my brother Bill, slow down, I caught something. Impossible, Bill said. You didn't have any bait on the hook. As I reeled in my catch, are you ready for this? It turned out to be three very nice fishing poles and reels that had obviously fallen off somebody else's boat and were just under the surface of the lake water because they mostly floated. 
Yep, my brother Bill got the three very nice fishing poles and reels that best I could tell had not been in the lake water very long, and I got a nice story to tell. And of course, a picture of my catch. Now, if I could just find that picture. We have had the blessing of lots of winter melting snow water from the mountains of Colorado and northern New Mexico that has increased the amount of water in our rivers and lakes. Fishing is good most places, and you should know that the New Mexico Game and Fish does stock fish, which ensures a much better chance of catching something. Example of this last week, they stocked 32 areas with channel catfish, 8,500 of them. Now remember that if you catch something that would look good and especially taste good, we'd like to have you do something. If you use some fresh chili company sauce, salsa, anything like that, take a picture of your catch and your cooking creation. And on the Facebook page for the Fresh Chili Company, post the picture and your recipe. We'll be glad to see it. This is Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Hit subscribe if you'd like to automatically get these. When people come to New Mexico, they find some of our towns have, how shall I say, very interesting names. And sometimes when I mention some of these, how shall I say, New Mexico very unusual names, people say, I don't know about that. I have to send people to the internet to show the disbelievers that these towns do in fact exist. Here's an example. In Otero County, there's a small settlement of Bug Scuffle, New Mexico. There's a mountain ridge Bug Scuffle, there's a Bug Scuffle Hill, and there's a small settlement called Bug Scuffle, often called Bug Scuffle Hunting Lodge. At the town site, there are perhaps a hundred houses, some just basic in nature, some very nice, because the area hinges on hunting. Much of the year, there's not many people. Now, where is this? It's in between Cloudcroft and Timberon on that paved road. It's about eight miles of dirt road. From there, there's a nice road sign. You go past Sunspot, and then you look to the west, and there's a road sign on the highway that indicates going west on a dirt road will get you to Bug Scuffle. I have been there. Michael Swickert here with Enchanting Stories. You know, every day is somebody's birthday, such as yesterday was the Fresh Chili Company's manager, Robert Pertle's birthday, and tomorrow, the 4th of July, was the birthday of a much-loved professor of engineering at New Mexico State University. His full name, Dr. Daniel Boone Jett. He came to the college in 1926. If you're on the campus, you know that the engineering building at the Horseshoe Circle and Espina is Jett Hall. Though former students didn't call him Dr. Daniel Boone Jett, rather, he was known almost by everybody as Dad Jett because he acted like everyone's dad. He retired as Dean of the Engineering College in 1947. However, he remained a professor of civil engineering for many years. And during my interviews of people as I was doing the history of NMSU, he was by far the most loved. A close second was Marion Hardman. There's Hardman Hall. In fact, just a little aside, without Marion Hardman guiding me in the early 70s, I would not be the writer I am today. These great professors made a lasting impression, and Dad Jet's birthday tomorrow, July 4th, is number one. Somebody else who celebrated their birthday on the 4th of July was U.S. President Calvin Coolidge. He was born the 4th of July, 1872. He was called Silent Cal for his ability to not speak unless it was absolutely necessary. He was vice president of the United States when President Warning, Warren G. Harding, you remember Harding County, New Mexico, well, that president died suddenly. Now, there's lots of stories about Coolidge, such as a woman at a state dinner said to him, I bet my husband I could get you to speak at least three words. Coolidge looked at her and said, you lose. Two words. Speaking of the 4th of July, on this date in 1803, President Thomas Jefferson, our third president, announced the Louisiana Purchase, effectively doubling the size of our country. 
there were a couple of problems. Well, big problems. No one knew exactly where to draw the lines, which is why the core of discovery, the Lewis and Clark expedition, was so very important to put the eyes on the western side of our country and say what was there. A great book was written by Stephen Ambrose. It's called Undaunted Courage. It details the expedition. I would, I would highly recommend that. Two interesting parts of that. Only one person out of the 25 died, and it was from disease very early on when and they had a lot of run-ins with a lot of people where you thought they were all going to be killed. Nope, they weren't. When the group got back to civilization in 1806, they were completely out of trade goods. They were completely out of food. But get this, they had enough lead, bullets, and powder to make the trip again. Some priorities. Speaking of New Mexico, June 24, 1806, about the time they got back, 27-year-old Lieutenant Zebulon Pike, you remember Pike's Peak, he was in command of an expedition to what turned out to be Colorado and New Mexico to map the terrain. Did you know he came through Las Cruces? We well, see they were captured near today's Alamosa, Colorado by Spanish soldiers from Santa Fe. They were taken through Albuquerque and our Las Cruces and El Paso to the Mexican state capital of Chihuahua and then repatriated to the United States in Louisiana on the 1st of July, 1807. Much of what our leaders of the United States knew about our area for many years was from Lieutenant Zebulon Pike's briefing after he returned. He said he was treated with respect after capture and spoke well of the captors. Three of our founding leaders, though, died on the 4th of July, and it's kind of, they were, they were part of our founding leaders. So Thomas Jefferson, the third president, John Adams, the second president, both died within hours of each other on the 4th of July, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And finally, James Monroe, he was the fifth president of the United States. He died on July 4th, 1831. Now, for some good news, if you love green chili, we're just around the corner from the harvest season. We are. We're getting very close to it, and uh, that means that whatever they pick, there's a few of them, flame roasted, turned into something delicious to eat. Fresh Chili Company's owner, Randy McMillan, has some videos on our website if you want to look at them, or you can go to Facebook and see those videos of what's going on. What is coming in a few weeks with this harvest around the corner is that Fresh Chili Company is offering a special reserve release of Hatch Green Chili Veritable Big Jim in a 16-ounce jar. And I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that. Veritol means this product will only be made with Big Jim Chili, which is a little sweeter and has a medium heat level, exactly what I like. Big Jim is very popular in New Mexico restaurants and homes. In 1975, Big Jim was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the largest chili pots, perfect for chili rellenos. It was developed by chili researcher Dr. Roy Nakayama at New Mexico State University. It was a hybrid of New Mexico chili peppers and a Peruvian pepper that Nakayama and fellow researcher Jim Lytle combined. Now, Big Jim was named for it because Big Jim Lytle died unexpectedly at that time. And so that's how we got the name Big Jim. One thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces or happen to be in our little slice of paradise, they can come by the Fresh Chili Company's gift shop at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You get to look at everything you want to look at. You get to pick the jars up and look at them, and I like going there. This is Michael Swickard with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thanks for your time today. We have lots of news and stories about New Mexico on these podcasts. If you have something or someone you would like me to talk about, write to me, michael at freshchilico.com. That's michael at freshchilico.com. 
Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.